There's some good memories here, but there's also some sad memories. Coming back to Charles Campbell to talk about it, in a way it sense, gives me a sense of closure and to begin the healing. I was working uh, for government as a translator in Ottawa and they used to send me here to Edmonton to visit the hospital and other places that had Inuit in it. I'm seeing kind of images of nurses and patients and orderlies. And... It, it, it's such an interesting way to look at this, this building, how it has uh, been helpful to people, helped them live, and on the other hand, has contributed to the demise of some of their cultures. I came to the council because it offered a, a very different experience. It was a federal government hospital. It moved to an entirely different rhythm because of the kind of patients that we received. So we had patients down from trap lines up north all over the place and you couldn't move people in and out quickly depending on how they could access, whether it be through ice roads, you know, rivers, whatever. We had to work with the rhythm of their lives which impacted the rhythm of how we, we worked with them. This is hard to comprehend sometimes when you think back by today's standards, eh? uh, being a patient for so long. Yeah. And when I left, finally, uh, I got to Gruard, and Alberta, well, I missed the old council. <laughs> I thought this was the only, this was the home I knew. Yeah, it's, that's the way that was. Now tomorrow, when this film is developed, I will show you a picture of your heart and love. The Indian hospital system was set up by the federal government after World War II, and it was a separate hospital system only for Indigenous patients. And hospitals like the Camsel were established um, across the country, and I, I think there were approximately 22 of these hospitals, and they were run by the federal government. Their sons and daughters of today face new enemies. One of them is a cruel disease, tuberculosis. Tuberculosis was one of the primary reasons for this kind of institutionalization of the hospital system for Indigenous peoples. There were efforts, much like residential schools, to create segregated systems, to have isolation. And when I think about the number of illnesses that spread, that piece of the history I think is very dark. I've also talked to a lot of people that said at least when there was a hospital that said the word Indian on it, we knew that we were welcome there. So it's interesting to me how those two sides, uh, segregation but feeling a sense of belonging, how they can play out for different people in different ways. I don't know what it was about Charles Campbell, but it's just a sense of you belong. Being around with other First Nations and being around with other people in this hospital it was just, it was like a sense of touch of home. And it was comfortable because it was the Aboriginal, it was the native hospital. People that were the native uh, in the city came here and they could see other native people and other native patients and that made them feel a little more, or maybe a little less threatened. People who were patients at the Kemsel Hospital came from a huge geography all over the Western Arctic, all of Alberta, and parts of Saskatchewan and, and BC. I was in the residential school for eight, eight years. The, the health department decided to launch a x-ray campaign, a portable campaign 
to go to Northern Reserves. Those that had TB were sent here to a Charles Council. They would have uh, tours, so they would, um, they would go out um, to communities to do um, x-raying, uh, dental checks, other kinds of, uh, of, of health kind of checks. And many times people didn't really know where they were being sent or why. People were removed, sometimes forcibly from their communities, and then kept there a long time. Like, almost grew up there. They grew, away, grew up away from their families, away from their communities. For many people, the council was a very long way away, um, and they may have been sent there without knowing exactly how long they'd be there for, um, what was going to happen when they got there, and, and when they'd be back. We tried to make like I'm thinking about Christmas time, or I'm thinking about it, it, try and make something happen just to make people feel a little bit more at home. I'm sh I mean, it, it wasn't, it wasn't home though. It wasn't home. In many ways, it was sad for me to see people away from their parents. And as you know, Inuit people are very family oriented. There was no cure for TB in those years that I remember. Just bed rest eh, and, and good food. That's it. Father died first in 46, and then mother a year later. And my the two little sisters and two little brothers, one died immediately. They just had no chance with that tuberculosis. I, I can still see their smiles. Mm. You know, they were so glad to see Enoch <laughs> in the middle of a Halunad world. Right. <laughs> Something they didn't expect. <laughs> Hospital offered a lot of a lot of uh, things to do. You could continue your education. Some drew, you know, start doing artwork like I did. <laughs> yeah. The arts and crafts program or the handicrafts program or the occupational therapy program at the Camsell Hospital was started uh, when the hospital opened basically. So it's part of the kind of regime of care from the very beginning. So from the staff perspective, it was about kind of keeping people busy. Um, and helping them to adhere to their treatment regime. For the patients themselves, um, making crafts may have had a, a significantly different meaning. People also um, may have made items that reminded them of their lives back home. And this is something that, uh, that some of the Inuit patients have talked about, carving memories from their life um, in the north to reconnect with a very distant home um, while they're in hospital. It was just, it was such, it was such a beautiful work. The, the, the bead work, the, um, just the care and attention, it connected them back to their community. What I've heard is that, you know, families in the North didn't really get a lot of communication about what happened to their loved ones. Um, and in some cases, those loved ones didn't come home and, you know, and then, if they didn't come home, well, where are they? And in some cases, where are they buried? In fact, Inuit are buried in St. Albert, and uh, she just buried them there, not even with the headstone. Inglewood has, uh, they are excited, they would love to see this developed because it's such an eyesore in its present condition. And I feel bad that it has taken so long for this group to get, to, to get this thing developed. So of course, uh, of it taking this long is I think now we 
come to recognize the importance of the truth and reconciliation movement. And uh, I think in the end it will have that advantage that we will do something towards that end, which we wouldn't have done had it been developed five uh, to ten years ago. It has a really mixed history, much more so than the other hospitals, and so I think there's a lot of people that own that. Even though this was a so-called Indian hospital, it's not only an Indigenous story. This is about all of us. I think unless you honour what happened in the past, uh, acknowledge that it has a lasting legacy, we'll never be able to reach true reconciliation. It holds a lot of history. Strong, strong history. Our history is what makes us who we are today. And sometimes, whether we've experienced a positive or a negative, um, it changes us. And so we need to tell a story because I think it helps us understand. I see it as part of actually the Truth and Reconciliation Movement. I think talking about the things that people have experienced in the past, I think it's good for healing. I think it's good for moving forward together as a community. I think it's important to, for, those, for the souls of the people who died here, and in honor of the memory of those who served and, you know, did good things here. I'd, I'd like to keep that memory going as well. So it's not just a bad place, but there was also some good things that came out of here. Yeah, keep that balance. Yes, they have a lot of work to do. Here. Yeah.